I would like to introduce this series by asking the question, how many of you believe that the share market is perfectly rational? Whilst contemplating your response, I want to emphasise that the aim of this series is to challenge what is too often taken for granted and perhaps alter your perceptions. My perception is that the share market is perfectly rational. It is people who use it that are irrational and superimpose their hopes and fears onto the share market. The share market has no emotions and cannot be euphoric or disappointed. Only humans display these emotions. The share market, on the other hand, mechanically goes about its two primary tasks in an efficient and timely manner. We tend to lose sight of what these functions are. First, to provide companies with a means of efficiently raising capital. And secondly, subsequently, providing you and I with a mechanism for exchanging for value the ownership of these productive businesses. Sadly, it has become all too convenient to blame the stock market, the messenger, for displaying the appalling habits of others. Some of you may be familiar with this slide. It is important to me. This slide displays the written word. And if you are human, you will not read what is written, but immediately shuffle things in your mind to make the words fit your preconceived idea of what it means. The principle I want to establish is the following. As pointed out in this article, with only two pieces of information in each word in the right spot, you are able to make sense of this. A similar situation applies with a spoken word. Presenting thousands of times, I have become aware that with a few key words in a sentence, many people are able to draw their own conclusions from what is said rather than observing the meaning that is trying to be conveyed. That could be completely different. I want you to keep this in mind throughout this series and perhaps allow me to offer you a different slant on much of that we take for granted in the investing world. Perception is reality is an accepted truism. The contradiction is that for each of us, our individual perceptions are our own realities. This is why different perceptions enable two people to observe the same glass and have two different realities. That is, is it half full or half empty? This is where divorces and wars begin. Same situation, merely a different perception. It is therefore very important in the sessions that follow that I provide some definitions for some of the words I will be using to avoid watches of this series overlaying their own realities. I want the message or my perceptions to be absolutely clear. The first word I would like to define is invest, a word that is used and abused by many to legitimize activity that has nothing to do with investing. Note the definitions of the word invest before you. The first two are the most important. Apply or use money, especially for profit, and put money for profit into stocks, etc. From these broad definitions, I could therefore assume that my purchase of shares and their subsequent sale, six or 12 months later, for a profit, constituted an investment. However, I would suggest that I did not invest, as I did not hold them long enough to enjoy the profits that the business will distribute to its shareholders year after year. To clarify this point, let's look at another word definition. To speculate. To deal in a commodity or asset in the hope of profiting from fluctuating prices. If one considers these definitions, I think it will become apparent that much discussion and commentary about investing is, in fact, nothing more than speculation. 
using the word investing will never legitimize the activity. So during this series, I would therefore like to adopt a slightly modified definition from these very broad dictionary definitions. Investing is a long-term process with a repeat profit performance, whilst speculation is a one-off transaction that creates either a gain or a loss. Whether we invest in our own business or in other people's businesses, it is clear that it is normally for the longer term and for repeat profits. The hard fact of life for many of us is that we will find little reinforcement for the sensible long-term process of investing in a world of sound bites, breaking news and ultimately endless and useless commentary. To highlight this point, let's consider the following headline from June 2006. Investors bail as markets mood darkens. At this time, the share market was again going through one of its repetitious periods of down rather than up. This headline appeared in the Australian Financial Review. On the same day, this second headline appeared in another publication. But I would like you to observe the start of the second paragraph. Investors rushed for the sell buttons for the second trading day. I think from these reports we can assume that investors were skittish and taking appropriate action, bailing out and hitting the sell buttons. I would suggest that this has nothing to do with investing, but the media and commentators generally would never reduce the relevance of their commentary by referring to any activity they are reporting as speculation. However, let's persevere. Two days later, on the 16th of June, having bailed out and pushed sell buttons, you may be surprised at what investors were doing next. Yes, you guessed it. As reported in the weekend edition, two days later they were piling back in. My question is this. Does anyone believe that this is the behaviour of investors? One day bailing out and the next day piling in? With clearly speculative behaviour labelled as investing, it has become increasingly difficult for observers to distinguish between what is valuable and what is totally useless information. As a speculator, all this may be of interest. As an investor, it is nothing more than an indication of the manic mood swings of speculators as reported by an equally manic media.